Hey guys, welcome to another Heavy Metal Diecast video and today we're going to do a little bit of a, um, a compare the pair. Uh, these are both actually um, Thunderbolts and they're both in the exact same markings. So um, they are obviously from different manufacturers. This one is uh, Forces of Valor, 172nd scale Diecast um, P47 Thunderbolt. And this one is more of a magazine -y type uh, D. Augustini type of one, like a cheaper brand. So I actually purchased this one at a, um, I actually got this at a really good price. I only paid $40. They normally go for a bit more than that. And this one I got for just under $25. So you could say this is sort of half the price in that. And what we'll do is we'll open each one and have a look and we'll compare what you're getting for your cheaper amount compared to your more high quality um, edition. All right, let's get the, uh, we'll start off with the, the cheaper one first. So as you can see, it comes in the uh, normal packet. So what we'll do is we'll get this uh, this bad boy out of the packet. So it is the usual deal. And here we have it. So what we'll do is we will take it out. And this, this actually has quite a, a fair bit of heft in it. Um, there is a lot of weight in these ones. Um, but we'll just set it down here and as you can see it does have the stand and all the accessories that you need for wheels up wheels down it actually does have some ordnance as well a couple of little bombs and, a, and a, a tank so we'll have a quick squeeze at the plane itself it's in a nice silver finish with the uh, d-day markings obviously it's got some nice uh, checkered checkered front cowl markings um, i think overall uh, it is a you know, pretty good looking unit uh, this one has got a little zombie on the side of it. So this one is HLV uh, 225742 on the tail, as you can see. Um, I think overall the uh, quality is pretty reasonable, um, as, as with these builds. The panel lines are all nice. It does not have a pile of figures, so these are the Razorbacks, as you can see. Um, we'll flip her over on the back. And obviously there's the pylons for the uh, ordnance. So you've got the bombs that will go there, landing gear obviously there, and the centre fuel tank. And what we'll do is we'll put the, uh, the uh, landing gear on underneath. And as you can see here, this is with all the uh, ordnance and landing gear on. It does come, present quite well. Um, it's quite easy to, to put on. With the, there is a little bit of thickness in the paint, so they do have a little bit of resistance when putting them on. Um, the problem with these, as per usual, uh, with that centre pylon, it does cover the hole for the stand, so when you want to display it on the stand, you can't have that um, centre fuselage with the ordnance on that, because the stand goes right in here, and um, this is the beast. The propeller does spin reasonably, but I mean overall, I think it's you know, when completed, it's a pretty pretty cool looking rendition for uh, just a tad under twenty five dollars, and uh, I think it's a really really nice example. So what we'll do is um, we'll get the uh, more expensive Forces of Valor example and have a look at that bit of kit. What do you reckon? So this is the Forces of Valor um, edition. Uh, it does have a lot more accessories. So there is a bit of assembly. It has a, as you can see in the packet, it does have all these cowl accessories. So you can see some engine detail, which is, that is straight away an added bonus that you can see within the packet um no good looking at it in the packet we'll, we'll get this bad boy open this is out of the packet um comes in a little sort of a presentation box with the little with the accessories still in a little sort of bubble area it has some tie downs um which we are gonna have to get off and uh it does come with a um a little booklet here which which does have some detailed instructions for it and also some accessories, some extra, you know, forces of Ella, what's available and all that kind of deal. So we'll get these tie-downs off and get this baby out. So with those tie-downs uh, opened up, this should lift out nice and easy, which it does. Um, as you can see, the detail on this is really, really nice. It does have some protect protective plastic there, um, for obviously with the transport. And... Um, We'll get on the right side, which we did on the first one. Uh, the propeller is already affixed on there. It does have some, uh, like a band on there to uh, protect it, I suppose, through the trans transport as well. 
um, and as you can see HLV is the markings 225742 on the tail so it is the exact same P47D Razorback um, although this one does not have the uh, zombie inscription on the side but um, you know, detail wise I think the panel lines and everything like that probably marginally better but um, to be honest not not that much different but I mean the uh, big thing with this is that engine detail that is uh, some pretty cool detail of that radial engine in there and obviously the assembly of the cowl has to be done um, obviously this does spin but it would we will have to take off that like a band and everything like that so it can spin I think the gun the guns themselves are a little bit better too on this um, so we'll flip it right and and the I think the little bit of the uh, the canopy detail seems a little bit like inside the canopy there is a little bit better in detail in there we'll flip her over and have a look underneath I think overall the detail underneath is really nice so obviously it has a little module uh, for the rear tail in there and then the modules for the uh, main main landing gear obviously seems to have the same ordnance package so what we'll do is we'll, um, we will just have a quick look at that ordnance package so that's the little packet that has all the uh, ordnance and everything like that that you need. So you can see those gear modules. So we should be able to just open it up. And have it fly everywhere. <laughs> but um, what we'll do is we'll uh, chuck on that, um, all that underneath uh, landing gear and everything on there. And we'll have a look at this bad boy with it completed. So here we have the assembled... Thunderbolt from uh, Forces of Valor, and you can see right away the difference um, with the rear tail wheel has the little bay that opens up and everything like that. The other one just had the tail wheel stuck in the silver, like in the back of the fuselage there. Um, the, the center fuselage ordnance there is a little bit different, um, and e even the, the wheel detail is a little bit better on this as well. Um, overall, the uh, panel lines and everything like that. Um, really really nice this module here was a little bit loose so I do have a little bit of blue tack because every time you flip it over it sort of drops off um, so we'll spin it one thing I did find the cowl doesn't sort of uh, join up a little bit properly and it does have a little bit of resistance in the turning and I've tried to mate it up as properly as possible um, but it, my one doesn't seem to want to do that so that is a little bit bit of a bummer but um i mean if you want to display it with the cowl off you've got that option because it does have that great engine detail and if you have two of the same you could have this one with the cowl off and the other one sitting near it completed so and um speaking of comparing what we'll do is we'll we will compare them so straight away we'll grab the uh grab the underneath of both of them and you can see straight away well one's got the uh, American markings on the underwing on both sides and quite quite large <laughs> um, and this has just got the small on that uh, wing here where my thumb is and you can see those details there there's a little bit difference in the tail tail marking details um, but the uh, the striping and everything is fairly similar um, detail obviously in in there is a lot less than here uh, and um, I think Obviously, this one is a little bit better in the, in the finer details, but this is a lot cheaper, so it all comes down to uh, your preference. Obviously, the cowl is all, doesn't move, so this is all one piece, and it looks uh, a lot better. So if you're sort of comparing them side on, there is a sort of a little bit difference the way the landing gear sits as well. And what we'll do is I'll compare them like so. And that's that's the two there. As you can see, there's a little bit um, a little bit of difference. Even the the checker is a little bit. That's quite large checker, and that's quite small checker. So I don't know historically how accurate either one is. I I didn't sort of check out this particular aircraft online to see if there are actual real life photos of it. Um, I'm I'm assuming so because I mean they have both chosen the same aircraft to uh, base a model on. And you can see with the cockpit detail, 
fairly um, basic compared to that's got a lot of detail inside like colorization and everything like that um, but overall both these Razorbacks are pretty cool um, I don't have a problem with any of them um, but yeah considering though they're both same markings um, and there's quite a few differences between the two which is I find very unusual so you'll see the uh, tail markings here and even there's a little bit of difference between the tail as well but look, to be honest, overall, they're both pretty cool cool models for what they are. Um, I think it's pretty cool. The Forces of Valor does have this little little stand, which, which does afford you the option of actually having it on the stand with the ordnance on. Um, so that that's the stand for that one. I'll quickly chuck this bad boy on the stand as well. And there you have it. So, um, yeah, as I said, look, it's all up to your own preferences, really. Um, they are both fairly good renditions of the P47D. I think they're both pretty cool in their own right, but it all comes down to your budget and what extra details you want. Obviously, the Forces of Valor one has some great detail. The option to view the engine does have some good interior sort of detail that you can see through the canopy. A little bit of finer details, but the guns are a little bit better. Colours are a little bit uh, more, more accurate. And obviously, this the the um, D Augustini Type One has the uh, it's it's value for money um, side of it. It 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 is fairly accurate. It is fairly nice, and um, I think it's pretty reasonable. You can see here that the differences between the uh, propellers as well. There's quite a large difference um, between those two propellers if you when you scale them together. But um, look, overall, look, it comes as I said, it comes down to your own personal choice whether you want. Um, to spend the money on the more expensive forces of Valor one, which you will get a better quality model, like accuracy wise, or if you're you're in a budget and you want a reasonably um, well detailed model for, and go for the uh, magazine type uh, one, which is a, a lot lot cheaper. But as I said, it's not a hundred percent you know comparable to the expensive one in in terms of some detail. So, you know, there's a couple of little details that aren't quite up to the more expensive one. But that's what you pay your money for. <laughs> the more expensive the model, obviously, the more more detail you're going to get for it. So, but I mean, that is not always the case either. So you've got to be pretty wary when you do buy some of your die cast. And that's why I am doing this little comparison video. I've done one on the uh, Dornier DO335, the Arrow. And um, they were identical models from two different companies and at two different <laughs> prices. But they, these ones, these are actually two different models. Like... Models are the same markings, like same fighter markings, but they are two two different models, two different type of builds. They are not from the same factory, just chucked in another box. They are completely different models made in different ways. So, all right, guys, I will leave it at that. This has been a long one, and um, I'll try not to bore you too much. Uh, obviously, stay to the end of this video. I will chuck some stills of these bad boys without the sausage fingers in the way. And um, if you can afford us a chance, give us a like. That'd be awesome. And um, yeah, all right guys, thanks for putting up with me for this long and you guys have a great rest of your day. Cheers.